Hello, I'm Corey L. Simpson, the senior pastor at New Antioch Church here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm inviting you right now to listen to a recording from today's message. Um, it's going to bless your life. It's going to enrich your life. It's going to encourage you. And you may even pass it to another family member so it can encourage them as well. We're located in Charlotte, North Carolina. You can find us on Facebook at New Antioch Church or find me on Instagram at Pastor C.L. Simpson. This is Pastor Corey L. Simpson signing off, inviting you to listen to our morning worship service this Sunday. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 12. Just turn the floor monitors up for me just a little bit uh, so I can at least hear myself up here. Amen. Thank you. Amen. First Timothy chapter one, verse 12. We are in the New Testament. First Timothy chapter one, verse 12. Say amen once you get there. Amen. It reads as thus, it says, I am thankful, I am grateful to the one who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord. Because he considered me faithful in putting me into ministry, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an ignorant man. But I was treated with mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And our Lord grace was abound, abundant, bringing faith and love in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. But here is why I was treated with mercy. Listen to this. So that in me, as the worst, Christ Jesus could demonstrate his uttermost patience as an example for those who are going to believe in him for eternal life. Mm -hmm. Now to the eternal king, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the day you made. We ask your God to give us a revelation that will help us in our daily living. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Apostle Paul says, Christ came into this world to save sinners. Then he says, this was struck a conscious nerve within my body. And I am the worst of them. But here is why I was treated with mercy. Paul was saying, I'm the worst sinner of the sinners. If you put all the sinners in a camp together, I'll be the worst of them all. Some of y'all probably saying, yeah, you put me in a group of my friends back in the day, I was the worst of them all. I remember Bishop testimony how he ran from the police and got arrested by God. Amen. He was probably one of the worst of them all. And, and then I ended up meeting one of his friends who preached at his son's funeral. And I kind of realized that I, I don't think uh, neither one of them could compare to one another. <laughs> they both seemed a little dangerous back in their days. But Paul was saying, even if I hung out with Bishop Odom and his friends, I was worse than them. Yeah. <laughs> you might argue the point, but uh, I think Paul got you, Bishop, on this one. <laughs> See, the unrealistic view of relationship with Christ comes from us seeing other relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. 
And because of their prosperity, we conjure up the attitude with a personal decision placed on them by our own thoughts and words that they have made the walk of Christ look easy. Yeah. Not based off their prayer life, lifestyle, or their spiritual walk, but merely based off what materialistic wealth they have obtained over time. Yeah. Notice I said over time. Oftentimes we throw in God we trust in the air without fully understanding what we have said when we say in God we trust. All right. Paul knew who God was, but Paul did not trust God because Paul was ignorant to the belief in God. He knew that God existed because his main goal was to persecute and to kill Christians yeah. for believing in God. Mm -hmm. And even now we see in God we trust imprinted on our money. Uh -huh. You have a dollar or two in your pocket that you have on there. In God we trust. Yeah. Even the president sign off on a television broadcast in God we trust. And it's a slogan for most churches. In God we trust. Paul understood this in later years. That in God we trust. Before it was why do you trust the God who allows me to prosecute you. I can imagine how Paul spoke to individuals right before he was to behead them. You trust a God who won't even protect you from a sinner like me. Uh -huh. You trust a God who will not even look out for you even when he knew I was coming on your trail. Uh -huh. I believe that some of us right now are being spoken to by Satan in the same manner. Why would God allow all this to happen to you if he's such a great I am? If he's so good to you, why is he allowing me to come into your life and wreak havoc in your life? Uh, if God is so good to you, why do he allow me to come in your children's life and turn their life upside down? Uh, and if God was so good to you, why did he allow me to come tempt you with temptations that he knew would destroy who you were? Uh, Satan comes in to try to tell us that God is not going to be for us. Uh, but I need just half a person in this sanctuary right now to say, in spite of how the enemy comes to remind me or try to tell me that God is not good, uh, I will still bless the Lord at all times. I hear you. Paul says, I am grateful for Christ, for he has strengthened me. Uh, See, we find strength in Christ. Uh, Psalms 29 and 11 says, The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Uh, anytime you don't have peace in your life, you got to know that Satan is somewhere around in your life. Uh, he's somewhere lurking, looking to see when he can slip in to remind you, just go back to where you come from because God is done using you the way that he needed to. Uh, Satan comes in in our ears sometimes, saints of God. If we're not strong enough, we will fall into them temptations that Satan sends to us. Yeah. Isaiah 49, 29 says, 40 and 29 says, God gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases uh, the strength. Uh, so when you find yourself at a weak point in life and you yeah. feel like you are about to faint, and because life is knocking you on all every on every side, yeah. you got to remember that you find strength through Christ. Yeah. And anytime the enemy comes and you start remembering rem reminiscing on all the things negative in your life, you got to say, Lord, you got to see to me some strength. Uh, not tomorrow, not the next day, but you got to send me some strength right now because yeah. the enemy is in my ear speaking to me, trying yeah. to yeah. pull me off the right path. Uh, yeah. But you got to understand that anytime the enemy is speaking to you, you got to bind the enemy up yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. The book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 13 and 14 says, 
I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, yeah. uh, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Paul makes a notion that even though I was a blasphemer and a prosecutor and an ignorant man, but I was treated with mercy by God himself. We all probably have known the story of Paul being a changed man uh, whose name was Saul before God apprehended him on the road to Damascus. Uh, we know Paul was a killer, a stone cone killer. He didn't care of the relationship with Christ. His job, his position was to be a leader of a group of fellow men who were killers. You ever heard the saying, a bird of the feather flock together? So therefore, if you look in the mirror at yourself and you look at the group of friends you hang around, you are just like them whether you know it in your mind or not because a bird of a feather flock together. If you want to be prosperous in Christ, hang around some prosperous Christians. If you want to be broke your entire life, hang around some broke people. If, if, if you want to be a sinner all your life, hang around some sinners. And even if you are the most believing Christian in the whole entire world, if you hang around sinners long enough, you become just like them. Because repeat after me, a bird of a feather who flops together. Um, if I want to be a good electrician, I hang around electricians. Amen. If I want to be a good banker, I hang around bankers. If I want to be a CEO of my own corporation, then I hang around CEOs of somebody with the with the knowledge to get me to the point I need to be. If I want to be a good Christian, I better get around Jesus. Because Jesus is the only one and God is the only one who can help me along this journey I call life. Because Paul says, I acted ignorant, ignorantly in unbelief, and the, our Lord grace was abundant, uh, bringing faith and love in Christ Jesus, uh, he who saved me. Maybe this morning you're thinking, well, Pastor, this message does not pertain to me. But have never been ignorant to the you you say I have never been ignorant to the love of God. But for, for, for my honest people uh, who have fallen short of the glory of God in life uh, and has maybe not killed someone, but how about how you mistreated others? Uh, how you laugh when people make jokes concerning them? Uh, how your laughter belittled them even more after someone made a remark about them. And maybe you have never laughed at someone when someone made a joke about them. But can you imagine how God feels Go we belittle the individuals who stand beside us? Can you imagine how God feels when we talk about our neighbor like God and make them human just like us? God says, I have no respect the person so therefore the person sitting to you next to you right now whether on your right or your left side uh, you are no better than them uh, even if it's a child sitting beside you uh, you are no better uh, than them uh, 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 how we respond when they need us the most uh, is how God looks at us uh, how we figure that problem can nowhere compared to what we are facing on a daily basis. Yes. We look at people and try to judge them by the color, uh -huh. by the color of their skin, yes. by the clothes that they wear. But God says, yes. I don't look at man out of appearance, but I look at the inner of a man. Yes. I, I look at the heart of a man to see who they are. Yes. See, we can fool people, but we can't who God or for a second you may have thought huh, the person to you didn't deserve the blessings and the breakthrough that God sent them. Yeah. We do not know when we praise God for our brother and our sister. Yeah. But God sent them a miracle or a breakthrough. Yeah. Then God will begin to see 
how we bless him uh, yes, for yes. what he's doing for them. Uh, yes. And when we begin to bless God for pray, bringing them out of their, out of their situation, yes. God will begin to see about us. Yes. You gotta understand that my praise depended on how I bless God for my neighbor. Yes. If Pastor Michelle get blessed, yes. I ought to exalt the Lord and say, God, I know she deserves it. Yes. I, I don't know what she's done for you. Yes. I don't know her yes. prayer life, but I know one thing. Yes. She deserves everything yes. that God has yes. for her. Yes. See, we don't know what Pastor Michelle had to go through yes. to sit where she yes. is sitting right now. Yes. I I don't know what Bishop Odom had to go through to sit where he is right now. And nobody knows what I had to go through to stand before you in this pulpit right now. But I gotta tell somebody. I may not know what you've been through. I may not have been through what you've been through. But God is on our side. And we got to bless his name for what he's doing for us. I remember preaching a message called Sweeping Around Your Own Front Door Before You Try to Sweep Around Mine. It reminds us that we must look at our own situation. We must look in the mirror at ourselves and not pass judgment on ourselves. But say, what can I do to become a better person? What can I do to become a better me? What can I do to change this world? What can I do for God? For God before me, who can stand against me? I'm not afraid of what people have to say about me. I'm not afraid about how they look about me. I'm not afraid of how they speak about me. The only thing I'm worried about is if I'm going to make it into the kingdom of God. The Bible tells me that only the righteous shall make it in to the kingdom of God. Do I got any righteous people in here right now that can stand with me and say, I'm so glad that God don't look at the outer appearance, but he sees the inside of me. He sees the tears I got to cry from he sees the pain in my heart. He sees me for who I am. I may struggle sometimes, but every time I turn around, God is making a way. God is turning me around, placing my feet on solid ground. Somebody testify with me and say, God is good. And it's so to do to all generations. Oh, magnify the Lord. Don't 
don't make me. My stock and my bonds don't make me. The way I brush up home, my hair don't make me. My parents may have made me, but God gave me the life. See, the Bible says in Thessalonians 5 and 23, may God himself, the God who makes everything, holy make you holy and whole, put you together spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ, the one who called you completely dependable. If he said it, he will do it. Friends, keep up your friends in prayer. We ought to pray for each other that our faith will not fail us. How many of you walk by faith and not by sight? If I can have a person on my left side, to say I'm so glad that I walk by faith and not by sight. If I have not seen the bank of sin, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or the righteous seed beg for bread. If you got a bed you're working too hard. If God be for you, I told you in my closing, He will supply your every need. I dare you to give God a praise every time the enemy tries to remind you that God has forgotten about you. You gotta stop worrying and being depressed. Keep your mind in negative thoughts. Remind yourself that God is faithful. Consider the ravens, for they neither sweet, so they never sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And what of you by morning can add a single hour to their lifespan? If then you cannot do even a little thing, why do you worry about matters? Why do you worry about things that God can change for you? When we worry, we get depressed and negative thoughts begin to build up in our minds. But in spite of all we go through, we got to be grateful for the things God has done so far. He has brought you from a mighty long way. Don't look at your current situation and say, I don't have much, but say, I have much. Don't say I'm stressed, but say whether I'm comfortable, I'm relaxed, I'm at peace, and I ain't worried. The God shall supply all my needs. Ah, yes, because I have come to realize I'm grateful for what the Lord has done. I won't worry about it no more. I'm ready to close right now. In my closing, we must come to the conclusions that God sits high, but he looks down low. The first day he created night from day. On the second day he separated the sky from the sea. On the third day he created the land and vegetation to come forth. On the fourth day he created the stars and the moon. On the fifth day he created the sea creatures, including the fish and the birds. On the sixth day he created animals and mankind. On the seventh day he rested. We see in the Old Testament, it took God seven days from the creation to the time he rested. But the New Testament says, it took God three days to raise Jesus from the dead. So what more can he do for you? And just one day, somebody better give God praise and thank him for the day that he has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord of me and as they call his name together. I will praise him. Hey, that's why Paul says, I will exalt.
is everything I need. He brought me a mighty long way. I found somebody who's sitting down and said, God brought me a mighty long way. He brought me a mighty long way. Yes, he did. He brought me a mighty long way. I didn't see a way out of it, but God made a way for me. It wasn't my mother. It wasn't my dad. It wasn't my sister. It wasn't my brother. shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night yeah, so that you may be careful to uh, to do accordingly to all that is written in it yeah. for then will your way prosper and then you will have success Amen. stop worrying because worrying causes depression uh -huh. and negative thoughts to uh -huh. enter our mind and we remind ourselves that we're not worthy for what God is going to do for us and every promise that God promised us will not come to pass. So we got to not go in depression mode, but we got to get in positive uh, modes and say, you know what? In spite of what the enemy said to me, I'm going to trust God. That's right. That's right. And if you want to take your mind off depression, go and start serving God. Do something in the house of God and watch what God begin to do for you. And every negative thought that comes to your mind, you'll say, nah, I can't, I don't got time for that because now your mind is focused on godly things. Amen. Amen. Satan try to come make me depressed. You know what I say? In the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. Amen. And I find something to start doing take my mind off the negative thoughts that Satan is trying to bring me. Amen. And lastly, be grateful. Somebody repeat after me. Be grateful. Be grateful. Say, I am grateful. I am grateful for all that the Lord has done. For the things God has done so far, He has brought you from a mighty long way. Don't look at your current situation and say, I don't have much, but say, I have much. I have more than enough. He said in the book of Psalms, my cup shall run over. So therefore, you may look at your life and say, I don't have what I need. But God says to you, you have everything that you need. You may not have everything you want, but you have everything you need. Don't say I'm stressed to the max, but say whether I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable, I'm at peace, I'm relieved with no worries. I'm not stressed. I'm no. I'm not worried about my situations because stress will cause you to be in the hospital. Amen. Stress will break your body down, and you be trying to figure out what is going on. And God is saying you stressed, but we bring it upon ourselves at times because I have come to realize I'm grateful for what the Lord has done. We cannot be worried and discontent and trying to please God at the same time. Before I come to this pulpit, every care, every worry, I don't think about any need more. When I sit here, whether I'm clapping my hands or singing a song, I'm trying to dissipate every situation that's negative in my life. Everything I'm trying to let it go so I can see God clearly for who he is. 
so I can deliver the word to his people. Because I come to realize negative thoughts will increase my decrease the magnitude of the message that God is trying to give his people. Negative thoughts don't come to make you stronger, but they come to pull you down and, and make you depressed and sad. That's, right. That's what negative thoughts do. Amen. But instead, find positive things to do to take your mind off things that you can that you can change, or even things you cannot change. Be grateful. Always give God thanks. For he is worthy to be praised. Amen. You show love towards one another. With every eye closed just for a moment. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. The rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely your goodness and love.